Well, you're probably wondering why I've got a Knight Rider bumper sitting on the flag semi. I kind of wonder that too. But the truth is, it's a beautiful day, a little cold, and I thought, why not do a video outside? So, I have a confession to make. As those of you who have been watching our channel know, we own two of the five surviving Knight Rider cars. One of them has been in the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles for three, almost three years. Wow, it was only supposed to be there a year, but we just kept extending it. They've been great to the car. Anyways, I have a confession to make. The front bumper on that car in the Peterson is not screen used. It used to be, but it's not now. The bumper you see here is screen used. And this is the one that was on that car, but it was on a different car, a very important original Knight Rider car before it was on ours. So let's dig in and I'll tell you the history of this bumper. All right, do me a favor. Let me see a show of hands. How many of you have seen the episode Junkyard Dog? Okay, pretty much everyone, right? Um, would you believe me if I told you that this bumper right here was the bumper that we see when Kit is being winched out of the acid pit after he's you know dropped in there and gutted? It's true. And you're probably wondering, Joe, how in the world do you know that this is the same bumper? Well, we'll get into that, just relax. But just know that this piece that you're looking at was used not only in the third season for Junkyard Dog, it was also used in the second season on, well, the same car, right? Um, and the reason it's off will become evident in a minute. So why don't I pull you in a little closer and let's take a detailed look at this original Knight Rider bumper. All right, so as we can see, this bumper is the original season two slash three style, right? We know that because in season one, the bumpers, the bumper that Michael Chaffee designed and the ones that Universal originally copied did not have fiberglass here, right? They were the plexi, the plexi panel over here, and then there was a cavity, and then that way you could see the turn signals through. This is all um, fiberglass. There's a very light indent to simulate the turn signal indents. You can see that on that side too. We can see here, we've got fog light grills. Now these fog light grills are not original. These are exact reproductions of the original ones that were in there. They're so exact, they even bolted into the original holes on the back. Now, here's the reason that this bumper is not on the car. And let me bring you in real close. Can you guys see all these paint imperfections, all these bubbles? So here's what happened. Before this car went to the Peterson, before we had it out for our, um, our picture car reunion in 2017, this car was in storage for a number of years. When it was in storage, it was unfortunately introduced to some moisture. The moisture bubbled the paint, mainly around this edge here. See it? So when the time came, you know, Peterson came calling, they wanted an original Knight Rider car and we were happy to oblige, but there's no way we were going to give them the car with this bumper on it looking like this. Um, and the time of year, it was, it was cold, it was snowy, there wasn't a chance to, and there wasn't time either to sand this down and refinish it. So we took it off, because we had another bumper available. The bumper that is currently on the car that's in the Peterson 
is actually a copy of the Hofnose bumper. So it's a direct copy of an original bumper, just not, and it's just not this bumper. The Hofnose, for those of you who aren't familiar, when the show ended in 1987, David Hasselhoff was gifted a front bumper and scanner from one of the original cars that we now own. And we, as soon as we got it, the first thing we did is we disassembled it and made a mold of it. And we cast one of the bumpers from that mold, and that's the one that's currently on the car in the Peterson. It looks very, very similar to this. It's a little bit different. This bumper will be going back on that car when we get it back from the Peterson. We're going to refinish it here in the spring so it's, it looks as good as the rest of the car. All right, so how in the world do we know that this bumper is the same one pulled out of the acid pit in Junkyard Dog? Well, let me pull you around to the back side of the bumper and we'll show you. All right, so here's the back side. Now take a look at this. We're gonna come under here. You guys see that number? 1965, the five is somewhat hard to see. Let's see if we can. See the five, 1965. All right, now, usually on this channel, we don't talk about the specific car numbers very often. There's a reason for that. We have on some occasions in the past. The reason we don't talk about the car numbers is because there's a few things that we keep quiet regarding the original cars. And that includes some of Universal Studios numbering systems, the location where they place those numbers, modifications done to the cars. And we do that on purpose because the more information that we put out there regarding those specific details, the easier it is for others to fake it, right? To, dupl to put those, those markings on the cars, to make those modifications, to try and pass cars off as originals. I hate that we have to do this, but you know, in the past few years, we've already, run across a number of vehicles where people have said they're originals and they are absolutely 100% not. And one of the tools in our arsenal is when we inspect these cars is we look for these markings, we look for these modifications. All right. So I'm going to, so, so the number on this bumper, 1965, that was, the, that was one of the stunt cars that came into play in the middle of the second season. It was one of the train wreck vehicles. And because we saw, we see, because we see this 1965, we can now tie this bumper to a specific car. And through uh, production documents and call sheets, we can also tie the number to episodes, and not even to episodes, to individual scenes as well. So the fact that this bumper has the number 1965 on it tells us a ton of things. This was on the, the uh, stunt car, had a manual transmission, and it was used for the reverse turbo boost in A Knight in Shining Armor. It was used in the climax of Silent Night. It was used in a number of episodes, but its most famous role was in season three whenever they gutted a car and dumped it into this so-called acid pit, just a mud bath really. And then when we see the car being pulled out, it is this exact bumper. Now, for those of you who followed the channel, you know that um, this manual transmission car, which we now know, or you now know as car 1965, we know um, later became the transforming super pursuit car, right? Because they needed a, a car where they could outfit it with hydraulics. So they, they already had the engine out of this car. They had the engine pulled before they even put it in the acid pit. So they had the shell of a car and they decided, well, that makes, that would be the perfect car to put all these hydraulics in and make it to um, be the transforming super pursuit car. And of course they had to remove the bumper because the super pursuit mode car had its own unique, you know, split bumper that lift up, lifts up and out. And they didn't use the bumper that was on there. George Barris crafted an entirely new one. So this one was, was left over. So at some point, this bumper was returned to Universal Studios. And my best guess is that at some point, either during the filming of the series or after the series, our car, the one that's in the Peterson, 
needed a different bumper. Either the bumper was damaged during filming and they put this one on, or after the show ended, the car didn't have its bumper. Someone took it for a memento, who knows, and then they had this one laying around and they put it on and it's been on ever since. But that's, um, that's how we can tie this to Junkyard Dog to our car. Pretty cool, huh? So one other thing I wanted to show you when we come around back here is the mounts, right? So on bumpers, on replica bumpers, these flanges are mold, they're molded fiberglass. They're molded right into the bumper. It's not the case here. I don't know if you can see, let's so bring you in here. You can see all these waves right here in the fiberglass. What you're actually looking at is a metal skeleton that's been glassed in. This is metal. And if you look here, there's metal reinforcement here. So what they did is they fabricated these metal brackets, put them in here and glass them all in. And that's what you're looking at right there. And right there, and here you can almost see it even better. See all these, see all this, um, this bulge in here? That's what that is, there's metal in here. And they just threw a bunch of glass in there. Also, to help keep the bumper from sagging, even though it really didn't work a lot of the time, they put these wood blocks, they glassed these wood blocks in under here, and they actually screwed the fiberglass. You can see the, the screws sticking out from the wood. They screwed the fiberglass into the wood and then glassed over the screw heads. Isn't that crazy? And look how thin this bumper is, super thin. However, this bumper actually weighs quite a bit because of these brackets, the wood, and different things like that. And we can see here, it does have the correct V shape that we see on the original cars from time to time. Um, the edges are kind of fragile. They're real, real thin fiberglass. And you can see here that, um, you know, they've chipped away over the years and whatnot. But, so there it is, guys. There's the story of an original bumper that we have. Like I said, it's going back on our um, car that's in the Peterson once it's returned and once we get a chance to refinish this. Um, Cause really that's where it belongs, right? That car doesn't deserve to have a replica bumper. Even if it's casted off an original, it deserves to have a screen used original bumper on it. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, one word that I wanna say to all of you would be copycatters out there. Sure, you can go ahead and put a number under the bumper and try and pass it off as an original. I guarantee you, you will not fool us. Please be proud of your replica. Don't pass it off as something it's not. Unfortunately, people out there do that. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this uh, little nugget of Knight Rider history. And again, I thought it was fitting that um, we do this video, screen use bumper on the screen use semi. So. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Always, as always, appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. And now, while we listen to Joe's selection of Knight Rider music that we received directly from Don Peak himself, we'd like to thank these Patreon supporters. Look at you guys scrolling up the screen to my right. Wait a minute, how can you tell which side is my right since you can't see me because I'm not on camera? Oh, well, you know what I mean. We are featuring these fine supporters at our Knight Rider Prop Restorer level. Thank you very much for your support. And for those of you at the Knight Rider History Hunter level, we're recognizing you right now in the description. Now, if you enjoyed seeing this golden nugget of Knight Rider history being rescued from obscurity, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support would empower us to bring you even more of these historical nuggets. We are the Knight Rider Historians. Till next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.